I have a love-hate relationship when it comes to Nintendo. I mean, let's see. They've released some of the best games of all time. I'm a big fan of handheld gaming, and let's face it, Nintendo have pretty much taken over that market. Heck, the Nintendo Wii was my first ever console as a kid, and was pretty much the reason why I still play video games to this day, 15 or so years later. There is definitely an argument to be made that Nintendo are the most influential and innovative video games company to date. They're also, however, probably the most archaic and out-of-touch video games company to date, as they have a tendency to ignore trends and player wants to go off and do their own thing, for better and for worse. I would like to focus on one thing specifically though, something that has been affecting me since its release in 2018, Nintendo Switch Online. I know this topic has been covered numerous times on YouTube, Reddit, and other social media platforms, but I wanted to go through a full rundown of all the things that led to this money-grabbing bootleg of an online system from Nintendo, so you can fully understand how horrible of a paid service this really is. Now in order to do that, I'm going to briefly go through the history of Nintendo's venture into lackluster online functionality, and how it ended up evolving into this. So all the way back in 2001, the Nintendo GameCube released and despite how popular the controller was, it garnered a mixed reception. It sold about 22 million units across the globe, which was much less than Nintendo anticipated. And there's many reasons for this. You see, during this time, Nintendo were competing with the likes of Xbox, Sony PlayStation, and Sega's Dreamcast, which meant the market share started to get tight as they all fought for console dominance. There was just one major issue with the GameCube though, there was no online compatibility. This sixth console generation was moving towards online gaming fast, with the Sega Dreamcast being the first to take the plunge, followed shortly by Xbox, and then the PlayStation 2, which all began to appeal to gamers at the time. The GameCube quite literally launched as the only console in the Big Four that had no online support, which definitely hurt its sales in the process, and in classic Nintendo fashion, they stated that they were confident enough with their offline strategy to not seriously explore the possibilities of online gaming. <laughs> Are you serious? In fact, it backfired so heavily, Nintendo actually ended up caving in by releasing the official GameCube broadband adapter roughly a year later, which again, in typical Nintendo fashion, was an accessory that you had to pay for separately that you could stick to the bottom of your GameCube that you could then plug your Ethernet cable into. Okay. All the other consoles had Wi-Fi built into the system. But there was yet another problem. There were no games released for it. So yeah, I think it was safe to say that that was a bit of a flop. So in 2008, Nintendo learnt their lesson and pushed for built-in Wi-Fi compatibility with the release of the Nintendo Wii, but in all the wrong ways. They seemed to want the Wii to not just be a console for video games, but more like an all-purpose smartphone as they released apps like the Weather Channel, News Channel, and the Internet Channel. Shit, I just found out you could order pizza to your house using the Wii. Later on down the line, you were able to do things like watch YouTube and Netflix, as well as sending emails and such, but... Uh... At least you could play DVDs on the Wii, but oh wait, you couldn't. Damn, I almost forgot about the games. You could play Mario Kart Wii? Yeah, that's it. No, I'm not joking, not many other games implemented multiplayer, and if they did, it was either shit, or they used it for online leaderboards. I will cut the Wii some slack though, as my first ever dive into online gaming was playing Team Deathmatch on GoldenEye 007, and I had an absolute blast with that game back in the day, even though all my friends from school were playing Black Ops 1 on the PlayStation 3. But again, as a consumer, you never bought a Wii for their online, you bought a Wii for their stellar single player games that also had decent couch co-op. Now onto the Wii U, and with it came a new online service called Nintendo Network. It's nice that Nintendo stayed consistent, because with the release of this joke of a console came a joke of an online service yet again. Nintendo Network was quite literally the same thing as the Wii's, but with an updated UI. Again, it released with incredibly obscure and niche features nobody cared for, like Nintendo's version of Skype and their take on a social media platform. What? In terms of games, the only three notable uses of online were Mario Kart 8, Smash 4, and Mario Maker if you enjoyed laggy gameplay of course. Sure, there were other games, but good luck finding people to play with. Just an editor's side note, I completely forgot Splatoon was a thing. I've never played any of the Splatoon games, but I know there's a pretty big community online in that franchise. But I also know that the servers are pretty awful, so no surprise there. It honestly feels like with the release of every new online service, Nintendo think they're cooking up the most innovative, game-breaking pile of shit that will take everyone by surprise, but always ends up slapping them right back in the face as they realise people buy their consoles for gameplay, not to see if it's raining on Saturday. 
Also, for those wondering, I purposefully left out talking about the DS and the 3DS simply because they used the same online service as their respective console at the time. So whatever online features it had was just as crap, if not worse, since you weren't able to plug in an Ethernet cable. I remember being psychopath enough to attempt playing Full Glory on Smash 4 3DS edition back whenever it came out and was unsurprisingly unable to even enter a game. And now, that finally leads us up to the main event, the creme de la creme of online services across all gaming consoles currently in existence, Nintendo Switch Online. Released in 2018, around a year after the Switch's release, this online subscription service launched and in all honesty, I remember being pretty hopeful about this one. I mean, it's the first time Nintendo have ever decided to put a paywall on their online capabilities, so that should mean it's good, right? I mean, at the very least, we could maybe get some access to some of the Wii classics like Super Mario Galaxy 2, similar to how PS Plus and Xbox Game Pass do it. Ha! <sighs> Man, I was so wrong, and shame on me for even having faith in this archaic joke of a company. Let me start off with the obvious and talk about the quality of the online play. Spoiler alert, it's abysmal. Playing online on Nintendo Switch feels like ordering the wing roulette from Nando's with your friends, but instead of two or three wings being unbelievably spicy, all of them are unbelievably spicy. It is so hard to get a stable and working game going on Smash Bros Ultimate, and of course, having an ethernet cable helps, but bear in mind, both players need to have one for it to even be semi-stable, which is already fairly rare and those odds just decrease the more players you add to an online match. Not to mention, how can Nintendo expect players to have to spend more money on an ethernet adapter since they couldn't be bothered to have an ethernet plug built into the dock? Anyone getting deja vu here or is it just me? But oh wait, the OLED model has one built in! Guess I'll just spend another £300 on a brand new Switch! You see what they did there? So we as a consumer are paying for a service that used to be free, and there is no noticeable upgrade in quality, so that must mean we get access to a bunch of older Nintendo classics, right? Correct actually, except wait what? What the fuck is this piece of shit? So instead of providing us with Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, Smash Bros Melee, we're getting NES games. Look, I understand that some people love old retro arcade games, but for the people who don't care for them like myself, Nintendo even know themselves that a lot of their playbase are on the younger side and will not have even been around when these games were relevant in the 90s. Like I seriously doubt Little Timmy is going to purchase a Nintendo Online subscription using his dad's credit card and immediately boot up Clue Clue Land for the NES. But you know, again I stayed hopeful for perhaps the eventual release of Super Mario Sunshine- Ah, I get where this is going. Now let's assume for a second that I am in fact a massive fan of retro games, and I'm even more of a fan of the original Metroid game for the NES. Well I can't just buy it separately, nor can I buy it in a retro game bundle without online functionality for a cheaper price. No, I have to buy the full package, and that's not all. I don't own the game. After a month, assuming you buy a month's membership, I lose access to playing that game. I've also heard that Nintendo were exceptionally slow when it came to releasing these NES and SNES classics which I find unacceptable considering how long ago these games came out, and that you're paying a subscription service fee, so in 2018, if you decided to buy the yearly subscription knowing that Nintendo promised a library of SNES classics in the near future, but it takes them a full year to release them, so by that point your subscription has expired, well yeah, you just got Nintendoed, get used to it. Got your ass. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about the last feature included in this package being cloud saves. You know, that thing that puts your save file on the cloud so you can continue on with your progress on a different device. I cannot believe Nintendo had the audacity to advertise cloud saves like it was this new innovative thing that justified it being part of a paid subscription. I mean just look at the Steam Deck for example, it offers cloud saves on every game at no extra cost, so it's completely absurd that Nintendo are making you pay for it. Not to mention, some games don't even support Nintendo cloud saves in the first place, such as Dark Souls, FIFA, Minecraft, Overwatch and Pokemon. This means if you don't pay for Nintendo Switch Online, and your data ends up getting corrupted somehow, you have lost all of those Pokemon you collected, all of those Overwatch skins, and that 150 hour Minecraft world with there being absolutely no way of getting it back. To make matters worse, if for some reason your membership expires and you can't afford to renew it, you won't be able to access your cloud data, and I've only just found out now 
that data gets perma-deleted if you don't renew it after 180 days. So yeah, pretty anti-consumer if you ask me. And of course, I feel like it would be criminal not to mention the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass, which you can buy for £35, assuming you get the 12-month membership, which is around £17 extra if you already have the basic subscription, and this grants you access to a couple of more things. So with the basic membership, you get to play NES, SNES, and Game Boy games, and that's it. If you get the expansion pack however, your retro arsenal now also includes Nintendo 64, Game Boy Advance and Sega Mega Drive games as well. To add to this, you also get access to DLC for extremely specific games like Mario Kart and Animal Crossing. Man, I cannot believe Nintendo actually listened to their player base and finally added an online expansion. I was honestly wondering when they'd announce such an important feature like this. What a time to be alive. Jokes aside, you already know my stance on their retro deal, but I do think it's incredibly stingy that they decided that you as a consumer have to pay even more money to access these much older titles. And again, I've been told that the games included at the launch of this expansion pass earlier this year were pretty lacklustre. Why couldn't they have just included these older games in the same subscription you have been paying for for years now? They also decided to just completely skip out the GameCube 2 for some reason, despite a lot of people asking for it like myself. I mean, knowing Nintendo, they'll probably add this later on down the line in a new expansion for the online service and call it Expansion Plus or something. And in terms of the added DLC, it honestly felt like Nintendo were just trying to add a bit more value into the expansion pass, so slapped up a bunch of incoming DLC into the bundle to justify the increased price. I mean, thank god they let me buy the Mario Kart 8 booster course pack separately because I had absolutely no interest in the other crap they were offering in the expansion. Nintendo have to be the first clowns in the entire history of video game companies to actually release an expansion for a fucking online service. I find it funny that I could probably talk more about how awful Nintendo Switch Online is than I can for my final dissertation at university. Some honourable mentions before I end the video off would be this voice chat feature they added for members only that allows you to chat to other players except it's a smartphone app? I mean, I don't know why you'd want to use this feature since you might as well use Discord on your phone at that point, which is free and probably works better anyway. Another honourable mention would be this godforsaken eShop that runs at 3fps and has probably the most awful UI layout of all time. But that isn't to do with the online as much, I just wanted to throw that in there. All in all, Nintendo, you shouldn't charge for a service that hardly works and offers features most people won't even use. There's a reason why Xbox and PlayStation have been charging for theirs. Not only is their online stable, but they offer a much more attractive catalogue of games that people actually want to play. If players want to play PS1 games, they'd emulate it, so it makes sense that Nintendo get extremely insecure when people try to emulate their games, as they'd prefer for you to pay for the games that came out in the 80s. It's pretty sad that Nintendo can get away with these malicious marketing strategies because, well, they're Nintendo. Any other company probably wouldn't be able to do the same. But yeah, this was pretty much all I wanted to get off my chest, so that's all from me. Peace.